Conversations That Matter is a partner program of the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. What exactly is HQ Vancouver? But more importantly, once you give us a description, why do we need it? HQ stands for headquarters. Yep. And um, Vancouver is the place we want HQ headquarters to come to. The organization was set up as a public-private partnership with involvement from the federal, the provincial governments and the Business Council of British Columbia with a very simple goal to encourage international companies, particularly Asian companies, to set up their head offices or head office functions in British Columbia. Why we need it is, to me, pretty obvious. We are a city that's uh, very attractive to immigrants around the world, growing very fast, uh, increasingly expensive, as we all know, and yet with more and more people wanting to move and live here. We also need the jobs that can support the population base that's growing, the kinds of jobs that pay uh, well, that support the sorts of lifestyles that Vancouverites want to have. And these jobs typically are associated with head offices. Uh, and, you know, head offices uh, go much beyond job creation. They also spawn a uh, industry of support services that are essential for the broader economy. I agree with you on all of that, but we saw an exodus of head offices mm. from Vancouver back in the 1990s, mm. uh, and a lot of them went to Calgary. Calgary seemed to be very aggressive about uh, wanting to attract head offices, and we just sort of seemed to let them go. Yes. Um, and when you take a look at Calgary, you can see why they would have some advantages. Uh, uh, lower cost of housing, definitely, than, uh, and even still than, than here. Yes. And a fairly highly skilled workforce. How do we now then start to compete with that? Well, many of those competitive disadvantages have been corrected. We now have a more competitive corporate tax rate than uh, Alberta does as of three months ago. In fact, British Columbia has the most competitive federal slash state provincial corporate tax rate of all of North America. Uh, we still unfortunately have the residue of a um, perception that we are a high tax jurisdiction. That's not true anymore. And certainly when it comes to comparisons with Alberta, we fare very favorably. So, so did this tax structure change because the provincial and federal governments work together specifically to help you do what you're doing? No, this mm. has been the year product of years of uh, provincial government primarily efforts to increase the competitiveness of the business environment in general, which has lowered the corporate tax rate uh, to a level now, as I say, that is uh, the most competitive in all of North America. But I want to stress, you know, that um, head offices are motivated not just by taxes, they are motivated by all-in business costs. They are also motivated by the ability to get talent, skilled workers, and they are motivated by the uh, centrality or the um, effectiveness of the location. And we offer all three. Mm -hmm. What I like to say is we offer the TLC package. We offer talent, mm -hmm. we offer location, and we offer competitiveness. If you look at the case of Calgary, you know, even when uh, many of the head offices were uh, located in, uh, in Alberta, had moved, say, from British Columbia, you, you know, would often find that the C-suite officers many of them would have their homes still in Vancouver, or they would come here on the weekends, uh, or in fact commute on a regular basis. So the attraction of Vancouver was very powerful even when head offices were located in Calgary. What we're trying to do now is to align the personal lifestyle and family interests of the top leadership of companies with their corporate interests by moving the head office operations to BC. So when head offices come in, they bring with them jobs that are generally higher paying. Uh, do they not? Yes, uh, yes. 
And, and does that then uh, start to negate the cost of housing that uh, so many people are looking at right now, saying, well, how can you attract anybody here if the people who work for them can't afford to live here? Well, uh, the fundamental question you're asking is affordability. Yes. And we all know that there's an affordability challenge in this city, but affordability consists of two functions. There is price and there is income. And we, to a deal effectively with the affordability problem, you have to work on both sides of the equation, both the numerator and the denominator. You certainly cannot work on the numerator alone. In other words, you cannot engineer affordability by um, precipitating a housing crash, for example. That would increase affordability, but it would mean a lot more pain and suffering for the economy as a whole. So the, the, the solution in large part, I believe, has to, be, has to be to raise average incomes. And that doesn't mean simply the incomes of the top people at, uh, at a company, but it means the support staff. It means the professional services sector that's going to thrive because there are more head offices here. One of the things I love to point out is that while our law firms and our accounting firms and our management consultancies here in Vancouver are smaller, than their counterparts in uh, Toronto. The heads of the Asia practices, they're all located here. Mm -hmm. We have a critical mass of talent on Asia business, which facilitates the establishment of head offices of Asian companies wanting to locate here. Just gotta get you to hang on here for a second sure. while we take a quick commercial break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. You've mentioned Asia a couple of times already. Is <clears throat> your primary focus on bringing Asian head offices to Vancouver? And why would they come to Vancouver to set up a head office? Would it be a North American head office rather than their, their global head office? Right. Is, is this what we're looking at? Generally speaking, yes. I mean, I'm totally agnostic <clears throat> on what kind of head office and where they come from. Head office is a head office. Uh, if a European company wants to set up its head office here, a North American presence, we welcome them and we'd help them in any way we can. But we know for a fact a couple of things. One that the Fortune 500 list today is uh, going to look very different 20 years from now, even mm -hmm. 10 years from now. In fact, in the year 2000, uh, there were perhaps 10% um, of companies from emerging markets on the Fortune 500 list. By 2020, that number will increase to 40%. That's a huge within number. Within 20 years. Within 20 years. Wow. 2000 to 2020. 2020 just down the road. It's yeah. four years away. And what that means is that there's a whole cohort of companies from countries like China, particularly China, that we've never even heard of before. And these are precisely the companies that are of world scale, that are looking to enter new markets, especially North America, and that will need to set up a... Uh, beachhead, uh, corporate head office presence. We're arguing that Vancouver is the ideal place for that first investment. So what is your mm. argument then? Because I'm sure that if you're a company in China and you're looking at North America, the market that is the most important is that in the United States. So why set up in another country outside yes. of the United States? What advantages does that bring to a company from China or Japan or Thailand. Yes. Um, well, you know, we uh, multinationals today um, have a distributed, typically have a distributed management and operation system so that they are, you might say, multiple head offices or multiple head office operations, uh, multiple centers of global product mandates. And uh, there are few uh, cities or centers that command the whole thing, so to speak. Uh, and we're not looking to, uh, to do that. But we believe that we can be one part of a network of head offices, and our particular niche is to be the kind of jurisdiction that is welcoming for Asian companies to penetrate uh, and to benefit from 
first of all the Canadian market but also the US market and Mexican market because of our NAFTA privileges and possibly also into South America because of our superior transportation linkages into uh, Latin America. Uh, the reasons why Chinese companies in particular might be attracted to that strategy, um, apart from the competitiveness and the location factors, have to do with how our city has changed in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have seen massive immigration from mainland China uh, many of these individuals are high net worth uh, persons who have ongoing connections and business ties with, uh, with Asia. <clears throat> they may continue to be doing business in the mainland but have their families here. We all have heard the stories about how this distorts the housing market and it pushes up prices and so on. But look, we are entering the period where high net worth individuals having emigrated here, having bought the big house, having put their kids in SFU or Crofton House, having got the golf membership, are now seriously looking at how they can align their family interests with their corporate interests. It takes time to do that. You're not going to do it the day you get off the boat and immigrate. You've got to figure out where you're going to live first and where you put your kids in school. But so many of our clients uh, from the mainland, have been here 10, 15, 20 years. Now they're talking to us about how do I bring my company's operation in Shetia Zhuang, China, and set up a head office for North America here so that I can spend more time with my family. This is our second of three breaks. We'll be back in a moment. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. So what is it that you can do to help them do that then? Like through HQ Vancouver, yes. how do you help facilitate that? We navigate the system, that's the long and the short of it. Uh, you know, they have to do the bulk of the work, obviously, and we don't pretend to um, offer legal advice or tax advice, but we work very closely with all the business professionals who have that kind of expertise. Fundamentally, our job, which is different from any other facilitator, is our ability to connect the dots with the federal government, uh, say on immigration issues, with the provincial government on, say, provincial nominee program or um, First Nations uh, questions, with the municipal governments on zoning issues, on oh, uh, electricity hookup, you know, very mundane things like that. And a very important addition that we bring to our services is our link with the private sector. As a creation of the Business Council of BC, we have access to you know, the CEOs of the largest companies. Uh, some may be more or less willing to help, but to the extent that we have a Chinese or Japanese or Korean or Indian CEO in a particular sector coming here looking to set up a new business, we can potentially put that person in touch with his or her peer uh, counterpart. And oftentimes, we find investors are more interested in meeting with private sector peers than with, say, a government official. Because they can get... They can uh, talk turkey. <laughs> they can talk the real stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what's it like operating here? They can talk deals as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our um, early successes uh, was, um, was uh, in some ways... Um, the most, um, the biggest contribution we made to one of our early successes was not in the mechanics of setting up the head office, but in introducing them to a potential buyer of the product which they manufacture. Now, whether they conclude the deal or not, we don't know. But these are the kinds of services we can offer to companies setting up here. Because ultimately, it's true, you know, our job is not, not to get them to put up the nameplate and the press release, that's just step one. Mm -hmm. Our job fundamentally is to help them succeed. Because if they don't succeed three years down the road, well, the word will go out. This is not a, head, this is not a viable head office location. So you have to stay connected to them then 
and help them network, help them succeed here in Vancouver if we hope to have future success. That's very important. This is where, you know, we, we uh, were not uh, fully set up to provide these um, uh, ongoing services, but we need as a jurisdiction with the various uh, levels of government, we need to figure out how we do investment promotion, including aftercare services for investors so that this kind of support can be provided well beyond the investment decision. How have you done so far in attracting uh, head offices? Well, it's early days. We've only been around for one year, yeah. but we, you know, we are counting um, three successes. We've got a fourth announcement uh, <coughs> coming up next week. In one year, you've been able to... Yes, we've been wow. very lucky. But, you know, I, what I want to say is that um, uh, attracting a company to set up a head office from start to finish can be a five or ten year process. I would imagine so. And uh, we are a three year project. Mm -hmm. So we have an inherent mm, disadvantage, you might say. So what we're very careful to do is to find opportunities that may already be in motion because of the efforts of our colleagues in the federal and provincial governments and in the municipal governments. And we then add value to them so that we can bring them to fruition, to closure, sooner than otherwise. Why are you only a three-year project if we know that the gestation period from concept to completion can be many years longer than that? Do I, you have an option for renewal? I, I, I hope so, uh, but this is uh, probably the kind of project that was set up uh, as an experimental pilot uh, effort which will then be assessed after a certain period of time. Uh, I'm personally convinced that uh, what we do, the services we offer are needed for the long term. They don't necessarily have to be in the form that we currently take, but there's no question of the need for two things. One is a a coordinated approach to promoting Vancouver as an investment destination, one that uh, cuts across different levels of government. And the second, very important, is the focus on head offices. There has not been this focus in our investment promotion efforts in the past, and we're only just waking up to BC's potential as a head office destination. I agree with you that there hasn't that focus hasn't been there. Uh, mm -hmm. Many years ago, I did a a series of stories when I was still working in daily news about the fact that head offices were leaving here and I talked to the Premier of the day from his office in the uh, Canada, Canada Place, place yes. and said why aren't we doing what Calgary's doing and he looked out the window and he said don't need to just take a look at that and that was the extent just he, yeah. he believed people are going to come here because this is the place uh, to come to but they haven't and yeah. if, if they don't what then does that uh, uh, I guess mean as far as Vancouver's mm. potential to be a world-class city? Because mm. we don't have that critical mass, mm. such as Seattle, yes. well, which has considerably more head offices with global reach. Do we then start to um, come up short of what our potential is as a uh, global center of influence? Absolutely. Complacency is our biggest risk. Uh, people will come here because of the beauty of our landscape and the uh, pristine environment but unless they are the these individuals also invest and generate uh, economic activity and wealth uh, only a few privileged few will be able to um, live the kinds of lifestyles that um, we all would aspire to in this jurisdiction and head offices have to be part of and just a part of the solution of making the city truly livable and affordable and economically dynamic. Final break. We'll be back in a sec. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. You've pointed out that federal, provincial, and even city and municipal governments have recognized that there's a need to attract head offices here. Yes. How important is it for 
uh, the citizenry <coughs> of the region mm. also to do the same. Because you are aware, as I am, yeah. that there's this tug between, well, we want to keep things just as they are right. versus right. Uh, continued growth. Mm. Um, and, and, and maybe is that changing because, as you say, the dynamic of the city, the, the, the makeup right. of the population is also changing. But does that not also play a factor or a role? It does in two different ways. The first is the one we talked about before. A lot of um, Vancouverites um, don't think uh, of ourselves. We don't think of ourselves as a head office city. Mm -hmm. We either lack the self-confidence or we have uh, imbibed the, the, the Kool-Aid from 20 years ago about how we're not a head office destination and we almost talk down our potential as a head office destination. We have to overcome that. And mm -hmm. we're working very hard at HQ Vancouver, not just to attract companies here, but to talk about the head office ecosystem that we already have and which is world class. We talk about why we have a value proposition that compares very favorably, extremely favorably, with our West Coast competitors. And then the second thing is uh, to understand that head office investments and head office jobs create the kind of, I don't want to overstate it, but greener, um, less industrial, um, more eye-pleasing office-type jobs that many urban Canadians seem to favour. Uh, more service-oriented, more creative industry-oriented, more technology-oriented. This is the direction that uh, many cities are going in, and head office investments pull and push in that same direction. And we're, of course, going after those same businesses. Mm -hmm. It's very important to the GDP of the region, isn't it? If you look at the market capitalization of head offices that are locally domiciled in the metro Vancouver area, uh, and you compare that with um, comparable cities in the U.S. and in uh, Canada, what we find, this is from a McKinsey study, what you will find is that we are at only one-third the potential of the average of the other cities. So it, we're coming up short. We're coming up way short. But the good news is, if we were to, if we were to simply fill half of that two-thirds gap, that would be an addition of $50 billion of wealth into the economy. So it's a, I don't want to say it's an easy win, but it's there for the taking. And that's why we need to have a dedicated focus on attracting head offices. Well, I wish you success, of course, in being able to attract companies to, to Vancouver, because I think you're right. When they locate here, we all benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in and doing Pleasure. this. Pleasure. Pleasure.